March 1999, I started at the church to establish an HR department and whatever else my, my hands found to do. And three months after that, Pastor Leah Quena came to me and asked for a lift so that I would take her into one of the informal settlements to a school in Rudenbach uh, where there was abject poverty and uh, the children were actually fainting from hunger. And on the spur of the moment, I said to Liaki, we'll have to feed these little ones. And after that, it was the school holiday. And the day before the school started, uh, in July, I went and looked for Leah. I found her in our top kitchen and said to Leah, a person's word is your honor. We said we're going to give the children something. What are we going to give them? So we actually looked what we could get together and we cooked in two pots. And what we instinctively realized was that once we've gone out, we can never stop because they're children at the end of our obedience. And so we actually started there with 200 children twice a week and uh, just by faithfully doing day in and day out what seems to be so mundane at times, God is checking out one's character that your word is your honor. If you have said you will do something, you better do it, even if it's to your own hurt. And sometimes I wonder if I hadn't listened and thought, well, we don't have sufficient to go out now. When we have enough, we will start to go out. Would our Father hold me accountable for the thousands and thousands of children we've reached? So, so God looks at character, integrity, and those are the things He promotes with, those are the things He builds with, and after that comes our skill and our gifting. So being involved with the children to the point where we're now taking out 6,300 mugs of soup daily into various areas, always with the word, because soup is fantastic, but soup or food cannot change a child. It's all about connecting them to Jesus Christ and that you give each one individual attention, no matter how many are standing before one because each one has been born to make a difference and God has a plan and a purpose for their lives. So we're painful about connecting the eye contact and handing it personally to each child. And we've seen a generation grow up of the first lot of children who are now in leadership positions all over. And just because of that, coming, whether it's raining, no matter what the situation is, never making an excuse. And out of that also grew the Talita Kumi ministry because we saw how children are abused and sexually molested and horrific, horrific, horrific circumstances. And then by thinking about it and meditating about it, God opened up the door that we could take hands with child welfare. They do the legal aspects and we handle the homes and we opened our Heidedal uh, place of safety in 2008, March 2008, registered for children two to 10 years old and way over a thousand have been placed. And then two years later, God started to lay on my heart the babies, not knowing that was uh, an ex the most urgent need. I just said, saw these little bottoms and pink feet and I just thought, but those are babies. Uh, there's something else we must do. Then people came, and they broke into our industrial laundry and, and wiped it clean. And immediately I sat at my desk and I said, now, Father, your word says that whatever happens to us in his negative, you will turn around positively. What's positive in this, Father? I got up to leave, go out of my office and whoop, just like that, God showed me baby house. So then the whole process of changing it into a place of safety. So we opened there in November 2010. I registered for 14 little ones. We've seen miracle upon miracle how God has touched their lives. The, the first um, vision that, that I actually had was for a village, but legally you couldn't do it and it was against building regulations and social department regulations. They changed that law a while back. So we're now in the process of building our first village, five houses that will house a mother and eight children, but in a community kind of setup. 
incorporating the baby house as well. And uh, there we will re register from newborn to 21. When people have asked me how they can do it, the only, let's call it, a recipe God gave me was first the prayer. And when one has seen a vision and you've truly seen it, th that will sustain you in the times and the years that it seems not to have happened. Uh, but it's by keeping that in mind and just being faithful day in and day out and day in and day out of all the many things God's shown us to do. He will release it in His timing unexpectedly where He wants us to focus next. And that's actually as, as easy and as difficult as that, that a vision needs to get feet and we have to act and when we're acting, that works with spiritual things again so that we can't become complacent and think, well, we're expecting money. No, we still are responsible to, to be good stewards, to look after what we've already got. In many of the places where we recycle and teach people not to waste. And then when we've done that, the possible, then our Father is faithful and comes through supernaturally. So just two testimonies quickly, that when we had to build the houses, um, we had saved money that would possibly, at a push, have been able to complete one house. But God showed clearly build five. The very first person we went to see, because we, we to see what kind of bricks we would use, ended up blessing us with the bricks of five houses. So in the natural it wasn't possible, but that's God's stamp of approval of you on the right track. And then a misunderstanding with houses number four and five, where we had told the people we knew we had the money to put up the roof of house number four, but the company thought and they made both. So Mary Lou told me the Friday and I said, oh, oh we don't have that money now, but let's just get through the weekend. And it was that Sunday that people streamed forward and just put money uh, on the stage and, 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 and all of that. And our pastor said, this has to go to community upliftment. And guess what? That was exactly the amount of money we needed to pay the suppliers that we coming. You can't say to a supplier, Oh, we're going to go pray about it now because your, your good name is worth more than precious ointment. So those are just two incidents. How God, when we're faithful, just comes through time and time and time again. So the whole Petor community upliftment uh, is a miracle of God and only He can get the glory.